Hello and welcome to the show. We still have this week's Ferris episode with Crash Kana on iRacing, uh, driving one of the four NASCARs. Everything goes but a little bit awry, just gets a bit loose off one of the corners, ends up firing up the circuit. However, the flip I just don't quite know. The crash into the wall makes sense. I think the wall must have like grabbed the car or something and the physics engine just decided to go for a big old spin. Uh, Sub-Zero up next on Horizon 4. Now this which I've seen a few times. When you crash into a tree, it decides to fire the car. The thing I love about this one is it's you've crashed into a tree and then you've been immediately fired out of the forest. Apparently there were no cars allowed in that particular area. Uh, Vernon Viper up next on Watch Dogs doing a race with a couple of the hatchbacks. Uh, when things go a little bit wrong, squish into the wall, and that is three rolls trying to get into the underground car park. Safe to say, and that is not the way to do it. Uh, due up next on Need for Speed Heat is my own business driving around in McLaren. Now, up ahead, there is a, another street race going on with a police chase, uh, but this is not really supposed to be affecting the player whatsoever. How it turns out, the uh, FRPD, yes, they are trialing some new technology. Stealth cars. They're effective, but also dangerous. I feel like they're, <laughs> they're, they're good for well, sneaking, but bad for being bumped into by just about everything. Not really ideal. Uh, Chalk Gaming up next on Farming Simulator has got a forklift truck kind of thing on the back of a flat, but now they're turning up to, I presume, deliver the truck over here or unload the forklift, whatever it is. Uh, they start moving the bed of the trailer when physics gets very angry and somehow the whole combination ends up on the roof. Pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to go. I'm pretty sure none of that was how it was supposed to go. But there we go. Uh, Apex Motorsport up next on a wreckfest. At Hell Ride, a lot of broken vehicles. Only two cars left driving, actually. Uh, managing, I've ne <laughs> we've done a lot of Hell Ride. I've never seen a vehicle manage to launch itself off of that sort of final turn in such a manner, get wedged on a bridge. Luckily for them, they actually do get released. They do manage to wiggle the car free. It gets dropped down from the bridge because that is not uh, not what you want. Not not what you want whatsoever. A Shard Knight up next on a wreckfest is driving a super van in a race against some trucks. Now they're kind of minding their own business. They're just trying to stay alive and trying to stay out of trouble, as you would with a super van against some trucks. When all of a sudden some weirdness goes on up ahead and watch for the green truck to get catapulted across the track as soon as the player gets close. Now there's a lot of trucks that are out or barely moving, quite heavily broken uh, in this one, but uh, yeah, that's an unusual thing, shall we say, to uh, to have going on. So we go for a little bit of super slow-mo, doesn't really solve very much. The white and green truck have a crash, well the green truck's Mr. Wheel is already very, very broken, um, gets sort of turned and gets rolled over, but that crash there is all fairly normal. I'm Try, you're trying to look for any sort of particular reason that it bump into something or what it was that caused it to get so angry. As the white truck is just about sneaking behind, there's no real rhyme or reason. The super van is just incredibly lucky. A second sooner, uh, or a second later, sorry, that truck getting pinged, and that would have just launched straight into the front of the super van, and it would kill the super van. While there's not much left of the truck, there's still enough of it to kill a super van, because let's face it, a super van is not exactly the strongest vehicle in the world. Uh, Leather cap up next on Snow Runner is uh, trying to pull a friend's truck when the game decided to get very, very angry. It launched the truck somewhere, not actually sure where. It does come back down to land alongside the pickup truck. I uh, didn't quite, uh, quite realise where it was. It's over by the rocks. Not sure what that winch did, quite how that winch worked, what that winch entailed. Other than things became very broken all of a sudden. Yeah, next, next winch didn't have the same effect. Didn't have the same effect whatsoever. Uh, next, we have got a Glitzka on SnowRunner as well. So they're doing one of these uh, delivery missions. So you deliver a big trailer and it will construct a oil platform or whatever. The thing is, Glitzka doesn't quite realise, and probably nobody would quite realise, as the truck ahead goes across to complete the thing, Glitzka's truck ends up being in the exact place where part of the drilling platform thing is supposed to be. Well... It's safe to say things have not gone well for the truck that is now very, very broken and very, very wedged. Yeah, probably not a good idea to park there when something's being built. I mean, by the looks of it, it's broken everything it can do, but, uh, yeah, not the place you want to be whatsoever. A doll up next on a BeamNG drive. This is around the uh, Driven to Destruction Proving Grounds, finding out that uh, the hopper might just lose the body. And when I say the body, I mean the entire body 
all in one go. You don't need that bit, right? I mean, the vehicle does still technically drive at this point, but you don't need you don't need all of that. That's not important, is it? Is it? Uh, Toyota Aholic up next on War Thunder. Now they're minding their own business in a little tank battle. Now, in this game, you can be a tank battle, so you can be with aircraft. It's all kind of the same thing, and they're having their own little fight when there is a bombing run going on from uh, aircraft up above. Now the tank doesn't get hit directly, however, the shock wave from the bomb is enough to roll the tank and launch it over the railing into the river. An indirect kill, but also a very spectacular one. Uh, Mike is up next on Project Cars 2. Uh, had a bit of unfortunate lag in the brakes, so I couldn't quite get the brakes in time. Into the back of a Sauber and everything goes flying. That's a huge crash from... I don't know how it got the momentum going on for that particular crash, because it was really quite the massive shunt. Uh, from, well, that particular zone, the Salba is certainly not moving anymore. And finally, we have a Dragon Hunter on R Factor 2. Uh, while the clip for some reason plays a little bit weird with my uh, editing software, you get the idea of the safety car having had enough of a problem at Monaco. There was a crash in the Monaco Tunnel, I don't know what causes it. Um, however, there is a crash in the Monaco Tunnel, the safety car does not care one jot for it. The problem is the player actually gets stuck behind it. The player, there's nowhere for the player car to go, it's just stuck involved in the wreck as well. Yeah, they didn't do a great job of clearing that one, it is safe to say. Well, there we go. That is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have clips you'd like to submit to this series, you can via our forums. There's a link in the description uh, at the very top of the page of the Failed Race uh, Clip Submission section. And there you can find all of the rules and how to submit them. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time... Uh, yeah, goodbye.